प्लीज कमी सर South India, mashallah, you have done a lot, and you already crossed your PhD levels. But we are still into primary section, and it is a very great. And you have seen that even Gujarati medium students want to hear, although they may not understand everything. So it is a very great need to sacrifice now venues of South uh, South India and to give more venues to North India, so that uh, educational revolution occurs in this part of the country also. so first and foremost i would thank him and there were some sponsors who who were instrumental in gathering all the required help and uh, for that lots of sponsors are not uh, here but one of the sponsors uh, mr aslam kagdi saab he is from hawa engineers limited he is here and i would call upon zakir saab to facilitate him on behalf of fii please aslam bhai he is a ceo and managing director of hawa engineers limited please yes zakir bhai
and uh, our uh, Afzal sir, Afzal Meman sir, he is also CEO of Gujarat Sarvajanik and uh, founder trustee and his firm Afzal Meman Brothers is also one of the sponsors. Afzal bhai. <laughs> and uh, one more, uh, three more who are not present, I would just name them. One is Sabar Pumps, which is a leading name in submersible pumps. Uh, but nobody, unfortunately, he is a very close friend of mine. He is not able to come because of some health issues. Uh, one of the uh, sponsors is our own company, Parsoli Motors. We are dealerships uh, for uh, BMW cars. So, <laughs> so, so I will take over the mic and I will ask Zakir sir to felicitate. Yes, sir. By ye, hamlok ke sabke to istakbal ikram yahan par jo kuch bhi hai, aur nahi hamlok sab iske mutmanni bhi hai. Lekin ma, me bhai Uwais ka sahe dil se shukriya da karta hu. Ye jo kuch bhi hai, aaj. इसने दिन रात अंतक मेहनत की है और हम इसके लिए इनको जितनी दुआएं दे सकते हो इतनी कम है क्योंकि जो कुड़हन और जो फिकर और जो इसको अभी इन्होंने ओढ़ना बिछाना बनाया है मैं इनको सलाम करता हूं और यही स्ट्रेंथ के साथ में यही फिकर के साथ में और इसी जज्बे के साथ में ये इसी तरह से हम लोग को भी मोटिवेट करते रहें और हमको भी याने हिला क्योंकि हमारे भाई उवेश का फोन आता ना थोड़ी देर तो हम भी थोड़ी दर्दगन हमारी तेज होती है तो ये आज के आज जो प्रोग्राम है आज का और कल का ये जो कुछ भी ये करने धरने वाली जात तो अल्लाह ही की है लेकिन हमारे भाई In the name of Allah, <clears throat> the Beneficent, the Merciful, the Lord of all the worlds to whom we belong, to whom is our return, may His choices, blessings, go to the highest of Allah's creation, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most generous in companionship, the most gentle in speech, indeed the most eloquent ambassador for humanity at large. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Whenever I am asked to address people, and especially young people like yourself, I know I have one opportunity. One opportunity to share with you, my for you, one opportunity to share with you the fact that I want none of you, because you are my sons and daughters, I want none of you ever, ever in your life to make those mistakes that damn you forever. I want none of you, none of you, when you are in the twilight years of your life, when you are in the twilight years of your life, that what happens when you are sitting back at home, tears are flowing, you have regrets. And I want you to understand this, that today, this day can be a turning point in your life. Today, could something could happen to you, inshallah, that when you look back, when you say to yourself, I feel hopeful, I'm excited about my life, I will never ever be a spectator once again. And this is a point. I travel throughout the world. I've conducted workshops in 24 plus countries. And the biggest crowd I addressed was over 10,000 people in one hall. Why am I sharing this with you? I'm not sharing this with you so that you say, wow, what a man. How brilliant he is. No, I'm saying this to you. 
And I want each one of you to understand, you are young, you are energetic, you must be positive. I remember, and I shared this with all of you, whenever, whenever you look at any person that is enjoying any kind of success, you assume that he had it easy. You think, no, maybe he came from a wealthy home. Maybe things were worked out well for him. But if you sit him down, if you chat with him, and suddenly you realize, aha, there was a time when he almost gave up on life. There was a time he even questioned if there is an Allah. And the same person, when he found Allah, when he found purpose in his life, slowly, very slowly, he began to pick up the pieces. Slowly, very slowly, he began to pick up the pieces. And you know what? You know what? I say this. In my experience, 80% of our homes are sad places. In my experience, four out of five people that you meet have some issue, some concern, some anxiety. And you know what, life, suddenly you are sitting here, I look at you, I look at myself. It seemed the other day. And now, here am I. Still optimistic. Still believe that we can do some things. So, I want all of you to stand up. All of you to stand up, please. I want you to repeat after me. And I mean it. I mean it. With Allah's blessing, if you open your heart, if you focus, you open your heart and say that today, inshallah, I'm going to change. Today, I'm going to change. I'm going to be a leader. When I go back home, my mom and dad will tell me, there's something different about you, son or daughter. I will make sure every day I would, I would live with a purpose. Every day. I will bring joy to others and pain to no one. When I walk down the street, people are going to say, Wow! What a man! Wow! Look at the sister. She's walking with dignity. My mind will be positive. I think, think good about people. I'll pray for humanity. I will not be like what one person said. That man has learned to fly like a bird in the sky. Swim like a fish in the sea. But he cannot walk like a human being on this earth. I appreciate, I appreciate the value of time. Value of time. Before, I know it, Before I know it, I'll be, I'll be an, old an old man. You may sit down. I want to, Jazakumullah, Jazakumullah, I want to just ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. And please raise your hands. How many of you hugged your mommy and daddy this morning? You gave them a hug. How many of you hugged your mommy and told mommy, I love you, ma. I love you, daddy. How many of you did that? None of you? Only one person? Two, three? Sad. Sad. Okay, I'll tell you something. 
I'll tell you something. And I want you to understand this. I want all of you to understand this. Psychologists have said, psychologists have said that if you do not change within 48 hours after a presentation, you'll never change. So I'm not here to excite you and say, what a talk, what a talk. But what my objective is, inshallah, that you'll go back, reflect on your life, and you'll change. So psychologists have said, if you have not changed within 48 hours after a presentation, it's unlikely to change. Unlikely you're going to change. And change is the only permanent thing in life. Now why am I telling you this? My mom and dad are with Allah. May Allah grant them the highest status in Jannah. But I can tell you one thing. I've learned painfully, I've learned painfully that the whole of humanity can never take their place. The whole of humanity can be the most pious, wonderful people in the world. They can never replace your parents. Now I'm going to just share with you three incidents. And I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this. Firstly, when you go for a funeral, you might see two sons, both of them crying. Them crying. One more emotional than the other. The one that is crying, but not as emotional than the other, he is thankful to God Almighty, to Allah, that he has such a wonderful father, and he prays that God forgives the father and grants him a high status in Jannah. And he's thankful that he was with his father. In fact, he was there when his father was dying. He knew that his father loved him and he loved the father. But there is the other son, you see, or the daughter, who is crying much more, much more profusely, hysterical, emotional. But her tears and his tears are tears of regret. You understand what I'm saying to you? Tears of regret. So, I'll tell you why I want you to hug mommy and daddy. And are you going to do this, inshallah? <laughs> right. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And say after me, I will hug my mom and dad. Say. Now, you may be wondering, the topic is unleashing your potential. Right. The topic is unleashing your potential. If you, tru if you truly understand the meaning of that word, Unleashing your potential, it also unleash your potential to love other people, to care for other people, to also unleash your potential intellectually, spiritually, in all aspects of your life. How can you unleash your potential when you cause hurt to your parents? You can never unleash your potential. Now let me tell you something. Many years ago, many years ago, there was a teacher who just qualified. Qualified as a teacher. He qualified as a teacher. And he was very nervous. He was very nervous. Whether. His pupils. Would listen to him. He was very nervous. Whether his pupils would listen to him. And this story I'm sharing with you. Was for me. A turning point in my relationship. With my father and my mother. So this teacher went to school and in the school, in the school, there were boys and girls in the classroom and the boys were inattentive, they were showing no interest. But there was one girl in the class that was showing an interest. She participated. She was a very bright girl. She had everything going for her. But three weeks went by, in the second term, she hadn't come back to school. So he asked the registrar, he said, where is this girl? He said, haven't you heard she had committed suicide? He said, I'll never rest until I find out what happened. 
Because a good teacher knows the background of his children. A good teacher understands what is it that motivates them. A good teacher has a profound understanding that every child is different. And there is a different way in which I can unleash the potential or connect with them. Hey, he went there. He said, I will not rest until I find out why she did what she did. So he went to the girl's house. He met the father. He met the mother. Both of them were loving. But none of them ever, ever, ever expressed the love for the child or hugged the child. So he began to teach his pupils how to show love to the family. And this was for me a turning point. It influenced me. And one father was recounting the story. He said, as I was sitting, as I am sitting here on this chair, my son came to me and he said to me, Daddy, Daddy, would you please stand up? I was taken aback by his request. I stood up. My son hugged me and told me, Daddy, I love you. I began to cry. I never felt like this ever before. And I was quite surprised he told me this. Then I asked him, my beloved son, why are you telling me this now? My son replied, must I tell you when you are dead? Must I tell you when you are dead? I immediately phoned my father. And I told him the same thing. He asked me the same thing. And I also told him, must I tell you when you are dead? From that moment, every time I used to see my father, meet him, even if I was coming here, if I saw my father in the corner, I would have gone to him and hugged him. So would you hug your parents? Yeah, would you hug your parents? Say yes. Say I like it. I like it. Now let me tell you about the potential each one of you have. None of my teachers, except for a few, ever believe that someday that I am going to be, you know, talking. I'll be coming to India, Ahmedabad, chatting with you. It's only through their duas, their prayers, and their support. And I'm going to ask you some questions after I finish this particular story. Once there was an eagle. This eagle laid his eggs on the highest mountain. This, egg, this eagle laid his eggs in the highest mountain. And mysteriously, mysteriously, one of the eggs of the eagle rolled down the mountain. Mysteriously. And it landed in the nest of a duck. So what happened? After a little while, the eggs of the ducks hatched and the mother duck is teaching his ducklings to wade in the water. To wade in the water. This poor little eaglet, ho ho, was having such a difficulty had no option but also to go in the water. Unbeknown to it, one day, one day, one day, it looked up into the sky. And there he saw his brothers and sisters flying. He looked up in the sky and he saw his brothers and sisters flying. And you know what it said? You know what it said? It said, and look at the emotion of these words. It said, how I wish I could fly. How I wish I could fly. How I wish I could fly. Now there are many lessons to be learned from there. Many, many lessons. You and I, all of us, have been born to do great things. We've been suppo we're supposed to fly like the bird in the sky. We are not supposed to do things that are ugly.
things that are fitting our purpose. It also shows that the friends you choose are important. You must not have friends that are toxic, friends that bring you down, friends that make you do wrong things. Thirdly, you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. Right or wrong? And therefore, you know, we are told that when you look at the mirror, we're supposed to say, I am beautiful outside, or Allah also make me beautiful inside. That the other person is not better than you, but he is different from you. So it's important. Very, very important. And I'll tell you, uh, let's go back. When I was at school, I was a very naughty boy. What was I? Say, I was a naughty boy. Say, naughty boy. Say, naughty boy. <laughs> so I was a naughty boy. So anyway, many of my teachers never gave me hope. I was around 14 years old. And my teacher had the habit of reading our essays. At that time, English wasn't so good. In fact, it was pretty weak. And they used to laugh at my mistakes. You know, the pupils, the teacher, and I also used to laugh, pretending, you know, it's okay. And I used to laugh. <laughs> so funny, sir. But no one knew that I was in pain. No one knew that I used to go to bed crying. No one knew that. I couldn't tell my father because... My father said to me, the teachers are always right, Kalas, at that time. So anyway, now next year, he said at nine, I was in another class, and we had another teacher, he's become my mentor, my father's friend, Smail Katrada, may Allah bless him. He's a good friend of mine today. And uh, we are doing a poem called God's Grandeur, very difficult poem. So I wasn't interested in the, in the lesson, so I was being a naughty boy. Then he saw me. He saw me. And he said to me, Idris, you're a naughty boy. I said, no, I'm not naughty. He said, well, I'm not leaving the class until you give me your interpretation of the last two lines of the poem. So anyway, what happened was that I gave an answer. I expected the class to laugh. I expected the class to laugh, but no one laughed. But no one laughed. No one laughed. And there it was. He said to me, Idris, such a brilliant interpretation. And he said to me, why don't you take your life seriously? You have the ability, he said. You have the ability. Take your life seriously. He went next door. He told the, my cousin next door. He said, your cousin Idris is a bright boy. And he gave such a brilliant interpretation. There it was. And I said to myself, wow. I can do it, right? I must do it. I must participate. And you will not believe it. About eight to ten years later, I became the chairman of the English. Society of South Africa. Because there was a teacher that believed in me and I believed in myself. That was a turning point. And remember this, and I want you to know this. You may walk around and pretend to be something else with your friends. You may walk around as if everything is fine. You may walk around as if you're a wonderful human being. You may walk around as if you're a secure person. You may walk around as if you're optimistic. You may walk around like, you know, look at me, man. I'm cool. You know what I mean? I'm looking at my style of walking. I'm cool, right? But you know exactly who you are when the lights are off, when you are sleeping alone in your bed. You know exactly who you are. And that's an important thing. You should know exactly who you are. So you are capable of doing great things. You see, one of the things that you've got to bear in mind, 
you've got to bear in mind. I don't want any one of you that when you are 80, 90, 70 years old, you're unwell, you are lying in the bed, and you look back at your life and you say to yourself, I had so many opportunities to change. I had so many opportunities to do great things, but I allowed other people to bring me down. Hmm? I have allowed other people to bring me down. So inshallah, will you do that, right? So the first thing is this, that you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to realize that you have the potential. Hey? you like that eagle. You have tremendous potential. Right? In the, uh, in the introduction, it was said, and I've got over three and a half thousand books at home. Three and a half thousand books. Now, I want you to th think about why should you read? Why should you read? And th give me ten benefits of reading. So what I want to do is this, because uh, it's been difficult to have a workshop here, I want you to talk to your immediate neighbor. Your immediate neighbor, and you'll share what are the benefits of reading. Will you do that? Right? I'm giving you five minutes. Talk to your neighbor. Don't walk around. Don't turn around. Your neighbor is the one next to you. If you're sitting alone, then you speak to your split personality. Right? So speak to your neighbor. And, and share with them what are the benefits of reading. Hmm? Okay? Start now. You know what I asked you to do? You all understand? You understand? You understand? You understand? You understand? You do? Right. Five benefits of reading. Right? Okay, you got four and a half minutes more. share with you uh, and I'm sure you also have reasons you can give thousands of reasons why you can what you can benefit from reading now let me tell you this and before I start off how many of you love reading alhamdulillah reading beautiful Say beautiful. beautiful. Right. Now let me share with you maybe 10 benefits of reading. 10 benefits. Right. Reading is like a portable universe. You can take you to any part of the world. Reading improves the word to use your linguistic competence. It, it, it helps you in your speech. Reading makes you a good storyteller. A good conversationalist. Reading makes you into an interesting human being. Reading makes you insightful. Reading you become, through reading, you become almost like a walking encyclopedia. Through reading, you become charismatic. You become an individual that people want to come to you. Reading gives you confidence. Reading enhances your self-esteem. Reading makes you self-aware and reading 
promotes that you do research before you speak. So how many reasons have I given you? How many reasons have I given you? Ten, alhamdulillah. I was sweating for a moment. I thought one more. Right. Anyway, now let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. And I want you to understand this. There is a beautiful quotation I came across. Listen to this quotation. I can understand. Right. I want you to repeat after me. Say, I, I can understand, can understand when, when a child, child is afraid of the dark. But, but I cannot forgive, I cannot forgive a, man a man who is afraid, who is afraid of, the light. of the light. Beautiful, isn't it? Some of us are afraid of new knowledge, afraid of the light. Hmm? So, what is very important, very, very critical, Right. We spoke about loving your parents. We spoke about believing in yourself. We are speaking about reading. And let me tell you, some of the most dynamic le leaders are good readers. Remember that. Some of the most dynamic leaders are good readers. Okay. Right. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the following. Right, thank you very much, yeah. Uh, I'm so glad that this boy is in the corner. So anyway, talking now about friends. But before I do that, I would want to give a gift. I don't have it here, but I want to give, I've written a number of books. The two titles are, the one book I've written is The Art of Public Speaking from an Islamic Perspective. And the other one, the joys of public speaking, it's for everyone. So, the first five people, the first five people who ask me a question, right? That group, they also, they're talking, that's good. I would give you a copy of the book. Even if I don't have it, God is a witness, Allah is a witness, I'll send it to you, right? Okay. Who want to ask me any questions so far? Don't ask me what's my name. That's too difficult. Where I come from, that's even more difficult. As you heard of Nelson Mandela, right? You heard how he speaks. He would have said something like this. I want you to know, I'm a very proud of people in Ahmedabad. If I'm not around, I will send my representative, Idris Khamisa, to Ahmedabad. So anyway, five questions. Who will ask the question? Now, let me tell you, let me tell you, if you want to unleash your potential, you cannot sit back and ask nothing. And I just shared this with the people. I shared this with the teachers the other day. There was one man who won the Nobel Prize. Thank you very much, my boy. Thank you. Thank you. He won the Nobel Prize for physics. Nobel Prize for what? Physics. So they asked him, to whom do you attribute your success? He said, my mother. He said, your mother? How come? He said, a lot of mothers would ask their children every day after school, have you learned something today? But my mother had a different thing to ask me. She used to ask me, did you ask a good question today? Look at how powerful is that. Did you ask a good question today? I learned to ask good questions. I learned to be curious. I learned to interrogate. And because of that, I became a researcher. Asking good questions. Okay. Asking good questions. So I want you to ask good questions. Remember this. You only fear God. Don't fear anyone else. You've got to do it. I know I made many mistakes when I started speaking in public. Now I fear nobody, no one except God. I just go out and speak. 
Yes, come. So my name is Sehraj Sheikh and I had this question. When you speak about motivation, uh, ray of light of knowledge, uh, sometimes in life it happens that because of daily schedule and everything, this motivation uh, loses its uh, 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 light. So uh, in day by day, for example, you give this motivational speech today. After a few days, it seems that uh, th that was true, but because of our daily life, this motivation tends to kill that, uh, uh, tends to kill. So, what should we do in that case? It's a very, very good question. In fact, this is what you've got to understand. This is what you need to understand. Please, uh, I would like someone to take his name down. I made a promise to him. I'll send him a copy of the book. You must arrange to get it from the organizers. Will you do that? Please. Now, let me explain this to you. The question he asked, yes, it's very well to motivate people. We all get excited, but once you get caught up in our daily routine, it's all lost, right or wrong. But that's the point, you see. Sometimes in life, it could be one word someone expressed that changes your life. Now, you've got to understand that if you do not effect change in your life, be prepared to accept the consequences much later. When you are young and youthful, you feel nothing. You're young, you're smoking, you still got the energy. But as you grow older, you begin to feel the ill effects. You cannot turn it around. So you must say to yourself, are you prepared to accept those consequences? Then what you need to do, once you are motivated, you must reorganize your priorities. You must change, you must do a lifestyle audit. You mean to, you've got to make sure you have goals in your life. You understand what I'm saying to you? You have to do it. And remember, you'll enjoy the fruits of it much later in your life. It's important. You've got, it's very, very important. Otherwise, many of us lead very mechanical lives. Eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, all the time, without any purpose. And there are many people who lead lives like that. In fact, there are many people who go through life without unleashing any potential. They only use 5% of the brain, for example. Okay, you understand what I'm saying to you? So you've got to take it seriously. He said, I must, I have to, rain or sunshine. For example, you may not know this, when I'm in Durban, my, right, and even when I go out, I take my tackies with me. I run an average of 10 kilometers a day, every day, right, and I'm only 34 years old. Right, so you know what I'm saying to you? So you've got to take ownership, lovely question. Next question.